Welcome back, Wolfpack. Brolis here, and I'm always excited to see some fear being struck into the enemy. And this time we have a full team of fear, not just one little off fun moment or a fear sweep, which somehow happens sometimes. But right here we have three fear mons, and there are some pretty solid ones. This has evolved beyond Rattata, yet we still call it fear, and against the Caesar. This is where things start to get interesting. I think Caesar might actually undo himself right here by trying to set up some kind of sword stance on the first turn. Because generally, priority should absolutely win out against the fear. And depending on how the team select went, he, yeah, I was about to say, should anticipate something like this. So that's going to be the bullet punch. Oh, wait, Smeargle gets the extreme speed. Wow. So yeah, the priority means nothing. And same for the spore. So going to spore the Caesar just to make sure. Also, if he tries to like switch or anything, we can make something work out of that and the opponent's Caesar is going to be fast asleep in this case, and that's going to be the Endeavor. So one hit points for the Caesar. I mean, yeah, that's extreme speed, so bullet punch means nothing. Awesome, awesome stuff right there, and that's going to be the Caesar critical hit. Critical hit had to have mattered on that one hit point. I swear that this game would have been lost without it. So now we have the Volt Switch. Opponent's Rotom is just like, yeah, I'm tired of you. Gonna switch out, get free rain on the next Pokemon. But that does set the opponent back because we can go into either the Nose Pass or the Magnemite, depending on what he brings in. So that's going to be the Greninja, and that's going to be responded with the Magnemite. So Magnemite, oh wow, the opponent, he doesn't he doesn't want to have anything to do with the Endeavor, apparently. And that's going to be the U-turn onto the Magnemite. I yeah, I've seen like double turn shenanigans. How does it fare against the fear is the question. So that's going to be the berry juice on the Magnemite. That's also going to just be all sorts of different stuff. So switching out on that Greninja into the Rotom in this case. Now Magnemite, it doesn't have the Endeavor. It doesn't have anything direct like that. It's going to get the Toxic down onto the Rotom. And we know that Rotom and Greninja, they can get out of this one if they need to. Now, the now yeah, we just get to see where this goes. Uh, Volt Switch, so he's not going to let that poison damage add up. But Magnemite is, this is actually weird right now. Because, yeah, Magnemite's going to be able to play around this really well. So, Volt Switch, it just means the opponent's going to make himself, like, try to survive longer. And he's going to get both of his Pokemon. No, he won't because of the way that the berry juice works. So it's recycle into the berry juice, healing back up to full, getting the sturdy ready to proc once again, and Magnemite is going to go for the protect, reading on what the opponent is going for right there, and Greninja actually throwing out the Dark Pulse. So this could actually show a bit more on what needs to be done right here, and that's going to be the Ice Beam. So not playing any of those switchy shenanigans, getting that Ice Beam down onto the Magnemite, and Magnemite, he has to, he has to do something with this. So that's going to be the Life Orb. Can he stall out the Life Orb, or is he going to go for the Toxic? All right, so Toxic down on both of the opponents. So it's all going to be up to Nose Pass on this one. And I thought Nose Pass was only like a one cycle kind of Pokemon. Actually, you can Pain Split with the Nose Pass. So he's going to get that Protect Stall going while both Pokemon are poisoned. Greninja has to deal with the Life Orb damage, so he's going to go down and Magnemite just playing out. So even with the opponent trying to switch around and delay or upset the Fear Strategy, uh, we're still going to get that level 1 destruction right there. And the Protean going to U-turn, and that's going to be Magnemite doing things. So the Poison damage stops adding up, but we are going to go into the Nose Pass, who is there for all sorts of Pain Split stuff and some form of regeneration and it might be enough even though the toxic is already down for nose pass to really make this one count interesting stuff yeah nose pass has the sturdy so he gets to get away with quite a bit and now we get to see how this one just unfolds like fear is its own interesting little strategy right there nose pass is going to protect you already have the setup that you need going for you and that's going to be trick Ooh. so now we see the trick so Rotom's really trying to play this one up, and that means that it's going to be a trick giving the Choice Scarf. Wow, this is this an all, like, when you break this down, this should not have worked at all. So that's going to be Pain Split right there, and Pain Split is going to be enough to heal potentially Nose Pass back up to full in a lot of different situations and add that poison damage on, but that is also going to be the Orin Berry, now slightly healing the Rotom, but poison damage is going to be there in the end, and the Hydro Pump from the Rotom is pretty much going to tell the tale of what happens. Nose Pass, one hit point survival, sturdy ability, but all Rotom has to do is have 22, actually, 
yeah, like less than 22 hit points. Enough to where it just adds up to 11 on that nose pass. And that's going to be the Rotom going down to the pain split plus poison damage. And then Greninja gets to meet the same fate. Ooh, but sometimes with the nose pass, it can backfire depending on the damage that goes down. So that's going to be the damage off of the Dark Pulse. Nose pass, going to survive it. Pain split is going to take some health away from the Greninja. But I think that the, you can dual pain split it and it'll be just fine. So nose pass with the pain split. Going to heal it up right there on that Battle of Share in the Pain. And the poison damage is not going to be enough on this turn. So yeah, that's what I mean. Nose pass isn't going to heal up to full on this. So it will have to be enough damage from the pain split into the toxic, but the toxic will be doing an eighth of health. So I think it is going to be enough, especially after the life orb. Never mind. Nose pass even flinches. Doesn't get to go because of that dark pulse, but the poison plus life orb is enough. Never mind what I was talking about. I did, it was just such an awkward set of events. Nothing about that was straightforward. The opponent had trick, had switching around, had to get like the double magnemite set up, and then nose pass had to actually knock out two Pokemon. So it wasn't direct one for ones with their last Pokemon standing. That was a really interesting way that the battle unfolded, and... Oh hey, Evan has another fear battle. Cool, let's do it. So, I'm still trying to unboggle my mind from the last one. Like, maybe it's a lot simpler than I'm thinking, and I'm just overthinking it, but we're gonna see how Gardevoir versus the Smeargle. This should be pretty simple right here, and Smeargle just the adapted fear, you know? It's gonna be better because of that extreme speed, and we have the Mega Gardevoir from the opponent. So, Sweeper versus Fear. Fear is going to win. That's how this breaks down, and that's going to be just all sorts of stuff. So, Thunder Wave on the Smeargle. That's actually not as straightforward, but it does give Smeargle the opportunity to get that Focus Sash saved unless it gets paralyzed. Oh man, that would have been huge right there. And I think that that might be... I'm trying to figure this one out because that could be an opportunity to get a good Spore in, but Smeargle still going to Spore regardless, and the Thunderbolt going to proc the Focus Sash. Now all we have to do is see the Extreme Speed and not the Paralysis, and that should be good for Smeargle, so Gardevoir is going to be asleep on this turn because that's Spore, and Endeavor. So, Endeavor, one hit points, you know, you gotta get the rotation right, gotta make sure everything's in order, and there's the Extreme Speed that will cause Gardevoir to go down, which makes Smeargle a very easy target to just knock out against, and Garchomp is going to be in. Garchomp with the Iron Tail, going to hit Smeargle for solid amounts of damage, and that's going to be it. So, Smeargle already getting the work done, and now we're going into the something. Garchomp has Life Orb, so we see the Life Orb damage plus the Toxic, really just burns the opponent down, and this time using the Iron Head, just use Iron Tail. Whatever. It doesn't matter what the opponent's doing, really, because he's locked into the fear right now. It's going to be an unfun time, and that's an Orenberry, so Orenberry on this turn for survival means that we do get a turn unless we flinch. That's not good by any stretch right there. So the Iron Head is going to just be a very solid hit against the level 1 Pokemon, even though it's being resisted, and those Pass going for the Pain Split anyways. Man, that... that that could set you back, you know, if you have the flinch, the wrong map priority. However, we might get in a really weird life orb scenario. So, Nose Pass is going to endure, and it looks like he just has to commit to that pain split and hope for the best. So, a little more damage right there, going back up to full health. Garchomp, going to be knocked down a little lower. Garchomp with that Iron Head, it's going to do some damage, but... Oh, here's what things... Yeah, I was about to say, he's going to endure the hit. That's going to be life orb damage, not enough, and then Nose Pass does get flinched again. The Pain Split wouldn't really matter too much. However, the Iron Head trade on this turn will be enough from that life orb. So yeah, it looks like the life orb will be enough in the end after all those hits coming through. And man, life orb versus the uh, toxic version of Sturdy Fear from the Magnemite is, or the Magnemite, or even the Nose Pass, pretty intense. And that's going to be Chandelure versus Magnemite, and it's going to be the same thing over again. So Chandler. Once the aggro, Sweeper versus level 1, some kind of gimmick, isn't going to work out too well. It's hard calling the toxic form, a uh, toxic variant of fear, but level 1, that's going to be the berry juice, and then we can, like, recycle after the toxic, and Chandler can't do anything unless, like, Flamethrower burns us. Like, status is a problem to this. This isn't a flawless, foolproof strategy by any means, but there are amazing times where you can mono-fear your opponent down, and that's a protect. And that's going to be stall, and the opponent's going to have a bad time. So poison. 
Adds up, the opponent can't switch out, can't reset it. Fire Blast is going to do its thing. Do I have to just worry about that? But you know, Magnemite survives. That's going to be the sturdy activating, and then we get to see the recycle. And it's going to be the same thing for the next couple of turns. So I guess I might as well do my closing statements. Uh, I feel that that's a pretty fair thing to do. So yeah, Fan Fridays for the first. I mean, normally in the end of these, I'll say like, have, I hope you guys had a great week and have a great weekend and stuff. But I mean, this is a very special time because Fan Fridays is on the first of the year. And yeah, it's like we, we got Fear Sweep stuff going on in the background. A couple more turns of this and it will be over. So don't even like worry about having a great fan fries or a great day. Let's just use this as an excellent opportunity to kick off the beginning of the year. Oh wait, Magnemite's burned. Oh boy, Magnemite with that recycle though. So going to recycle, going to find that berry juice, going to heal up in the end. Oh no, I don't think it's going to be enough. Oh, never mind. So the burn did come through for the opponent. Wait, oh he got burned on that. Yeah, there's the burn. I was about to say. How is all this? Oh my goodness, a fire. Nah, it's not going to. Oh wait, Magnemite had to protect. Never mind. Oh my goodness, even with the Fire Blast getting the burn, it was a little late. Whoa, the Memento isn't really going to do too much. I forgot the Magnemite had to protect for that moment. It looked, it looked really scary right there. And Magnemite still survives even with the status. So you guys enjoyed Fan Fridays this week, and let's just make it to where you guys have a great year as well. So fun fear, uh, the opponent. Mm. It looks like this was fortunately registered on Christmas Eve, so he only had a bad Christmas, and there is still a good year ahead for him as well. So, yep, let's keep some in some Fan Fridays battles. If you will be on Fan Fridays, all you have to do is comment down below in this battle your battle code. I'll give it a shot, and if it's awesome, it'll be on Fan Fridays. Even if it isn't, or even if it is awesome, it might not make it on Fan Fridays. You have to clear that up, and I will see you guys whenever I make a new video, which will be tomorrow.